and inspection team three, right? You'll check out our intercontinental defense weapon, 147. It lies approximately 1,000 yards uh, due east, right? Uh-huh. Now, team four, you backtrack the cable to sector H. Make certain there's no abrasion from underwater rock formations. Very important. Anything you'd like to say, Captain Brent? Merely a word of caution. This area is a graveyard for ancient pirate treasure ships. <laughs> well, the, the captain's right, gentlemen. Now, if you happen upon any old Spanish gold doubloons, don't pick them up. <laughs> no, 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 no. Take, take the admiral seriously. There's a curse on them. It would be tragic if some of you men were killed because of an ancient pirate curse. Richard Basehart, David Hedison, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Transmit. Intercontinental defense weapon 147 located and inspected. Testing out operational. Uh, what about telemetry and the firing cable? All A-OK, -okay, sir. Very well. Return to Seaview. Aye, sir. Oh, by the way, Admiral, you were right. What about it? There being pirate treasure around here. We found an old Spanish gold doubloon. Shall we leave it, sir? <laughs> 
prior order countermanded. You can bring it aboard as a souvenir. Aye, sir. Well, another satisfactory inspection, gentlemen. It certainly sounds like it, Admiral. Perhaps so. You have reservations, Captain? About the finding of the Spanish doubloon, yes. Well, you don't take that old pirate curse seriously, do you? Why not? Oh, I've known sailors to be superstitious. But you, a technical advisor sent aboard by the Allied High Command? Superstition, my dear Captain, is often born in fact. I trust in this case I'm wrong. What's our status? Minor hull strain, frames 32 and 51. We'll shore bulkheads and seal leakage. What's our power situation? Main circuit breakers shorted out. Full power will be restored shortly. Sparks, try the raise inspection team three. Aye, sir. It was defense weapon 147 that went off. Propellant fuel only. Well, not the warhead. Otherwise, we wouldn't be standing here discussing it. What do you think of my superstition now, Admiral? At the moment, I'm thinking of two men who are probably dead. Do you think the instrumentation broke down? Well, I, I doubt it. Why not? There's no proof to the contrary. Because the inspection crew checked it out as A-OK. -okay. There's no proof. Forgive me, Admiral. The testing instruments, they may have been faulty. The cable may accidentally been activated under the impulse of the magnetic field. There's not a chance. The activating equipment was checked for just that possibility. Then we're back to the Spanish doubloon and the pirate's curse, aren't we? I refuse to accept that as being responsible for the death of my men. This is Spark, sir. No response to attempts to contact inspection team three. All right, Sparks. Uh... Use the TV monitors to scour the area, see if you can pick them up. Yes, sir. And there's a video call coming in from Admiral Howard, 11th Fleet. I'll take it in the observation notes. Aye, sir. Harry, what the devil happened to number 147? Well, all I know right now is that a propellant blew. You're supposed to be testing our defense system in that sector? Didn't you check it out? Our inspection crew reported it safe and operable. But she's still blue. Harry, in six hours, one cable will connect 275 intercontinental defense weapons. 274. If we don't have any more premature explosions. I'll see to it that we don't. Find out what happened. Malfunction, sabotage, defective telemetry, whatever. Will do. We you heard the Admiral. Aye, sir. I hear this. All divers, minisub crews, and launch technicians lay out to the missile room on the double. Repeat. All divers, minisub crews, and launch technicians lay out to the missile room on the double. Sub, obviously, a wet submarine. That's right, Captain. Such a small craft, one would assume that uh, it would have a limited cruising range. Not so bad. She carries enough fuel to make about 500 nautical miles. Oh. Captain, this is Morton. Mini sub ready to launch at 0900. How many knots can she make? What? 
The mini sub, what is a cruising speed? You are getting into classified information, Captain Burr. Hold the mini sub launch, Chip. Let's send the divers out. I'll be right there. Aye, aye, sir. Sorry, but we've got work to do. Do you have any further questions? Please ask me the Admiral. Oh, of course. It's stupid of me here. Uh, I apologize if I've been inconvenient to you. Kowalski, stand by the airlock. Aye, sir. Admiral, lend the divers a hand. You all know what our job is. You've all been briefed on the defense weapon location the sectors involved. You go out in teams. After what happened in Inspection Team 3 a while ago, I don't have to give you any additional caution. All right, first team. Cover sectors K and L. Check them out through and keep in touch. Second team. Hanson? Yes, sir. Check with electrical stores. I want you to take an uh, electronic beam detector along with it. Right away, sir. went up. If you find anything, anything at all, don't touch it. Just report back here in the double. Release divers. Oh, where's Henderson? Hasn't he come back yet? I don't know, sir. I haven't seen him. I we should be holding him up. Should have been here five minutes ago. Ben Henderson, come on, we've got work to do. Now keep your eyes peeled. If that gadget registers anything at all, get on the horn fast. You got it? Launch minutes up. Aye, sir. Get out of the heavy stuff. Alan, give me a hand, will you? Last two divers are in, sir. They have nothing to add to their radio reports. There's nothing out there. All right, Kowalski, secure the diving mission. Sir, hmm? I have a request I'd like to make. Go ahead. Well, those men on inspection team three, sir. They were a couple of my buddies. So if there's any further special duties involved, sir, I'd like to be assigned to I guess we all would, Kowalski. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, sir. Okay, boys. Report to sickbay for physical checkout. Reports from the divers. Yes, 
nothing. Nothing to account for that weapon going off as it did. Well, maybe it was some wiring defect or malfunction. No, I don't believe it, Lee. I, I can't afford to believe it. In five hours, 274 lethal weapons are going to be linked by cable out there. Now, what happens if we accept this as a malfunction and the warheads start to blow in a chain reaction? Well, there's always a Captain Brent's theory of the pirate's curse. No, no, I don't think even Captain Brent believed that. Captain, this is the exec. Could you report at once to quarter B? This is an emergency, urgent. Be right there, Chip. Anderson responded inside. There seems badly hurt, sir. Anderson? I'll get him to sit right. away. All right, let's have it. Well, Anderson was one of the two men assigned to the Minnesota. Well, how many men left? Two. And Henderson's wetsuit is gone. Where is Captain Brent? Well, I don't know, sir. The last time I saw him was in the missile room. He was watching the Minnesota being prepared for launch. Better check his cabin. Captain Brent? Sub's been gone for three hours and no report for it. Now, why should that give me a feeling that I'm sitting on a bomb ready to go off? We are. 274 of them all connected to one cable and all ready to become operational in two hours. This just came in for you, sir, from Allied High Command. Thanks, Ray. Oh, it's the reply to our question about Brent. Excellent character, highly qualified as electronic force field engineer, impeccable family background for generations, only exception one ancestor who was a buccaneer in the 16th century. Captain, this is Sparks. I think the mini-sub's trying to get through to us. Hold on to them, I'll be right there. Sea View to Mini Sub. Sea View to Mini Sub. Come in, please. Come in. Sea View to Mini Sub. Sea View to Mini Sub. They were on a minute ago, sir. Faint and a little garbled, but it was a Mini Sub Treasure beyond ships. any. Treasure ships. They're coming in again, sir. Can you hear me, Sea View? Can you hear me? Nothing down here but ancient treasure ships. Oceans filled with them. Can you hear me? Come in. Come in. Can you hear me, Sea View? It's Captain Brent. Captain, it's Admiral Nelson. You read me? I read you. I read you, Admiral Nelson, the whole sea, all filled with sunken treasure ships. Hundreds of them. Admiral Nelson, can you read me? Gold. Doubloons. Spanish doubloons, the whole sea is covered with them. Captain, will you stop that babbling and listen to me? Wait. Sea view. Sea view. There's something out there. It's coming toward us. It's going to hit us. Go back. Go back. Go back there! Go back! Explosion, a big one. Rig for underwater explosion. Rig for underwater explosion. Man all emergency stations. Man all emergency stations. Take a seismograph reading. The direction and bearing of the shockwave. Aye, sir. Emergency stations. Secure emergency stations. All normal. What's the reading? I make the bearing two, four, three degrees, sir. 
Estimated distance 40 to 45 miles. Are you sure of that distance? Yes, sir. No mistake. Let's mark it out, Larry. Oh, that's where the middies are blue. There are no defense weapons in that area. What would Brent be doing out there, and what happened to him? It's a good question. Well, only two of many involving Captain Brent. Including treasure ships, Spanish doubloons, and ancient pirate curses. Yeah, not to mention the unexplained destruction of defense weapon 147. Look, Lee. It's the Ile de Morte, the island of death. It's the only piece of land for hundreds of miles around. And it's only a few miles from the explosion. It's also very well known in the 16th century as a pirate hangout. This is the captain. Prepare the flying sub for immediate launch. Aye, sir. What's our present position? Approaching coordinate 93 Victor L, sir. Should be at the spot where the mini sub blew in two minutes. Good. We'll submerge in the area. Yes, sir. Skipper, there's been some scuttlebutt aboard the Sea View. You know, about all that's been going on. What kind of scuttlebutt? Well, we've lost three men already, not counting Captain Brent. And um, all this talk about treasures and doubloons and pirate curses and all. And some of them are wondering if there might be something to these pirate curses, right? <laughs> yes, sir. I guess that's it. <laughs> well, forget it. Sea View's on a routine mission. Inspection of undersea defense systems. Unfortunately, there have been a couple of accidents, but uh, that's all there is to it. Yes, sir. But you can hardly blame the man for Skipper. I must be saying things. You're saying things, all right. It, it's not possible. It wasn't there ten seconds ago. to the observation hose. Aye, sir. Go ahead, sir. This is Nelson. This is Travis at the Pentagon, Admiral. Did you receive our investigation report on Captain Brent? Yeah, some time ago. Now, what is it? We received additional information concerning him. You better scratch everything we told you. I'll take this down. What do you have, Travis? Allied Command got the wind up after your inquiry. We're trying to recheck it now. There's nothing definite we can tell you, but there seems to be something wrong with the man. Well, what, what kind of things, Travis? Well, no, what, what did you come up with? Gaps in time in his past. Forged birth certificate, school records. Almost as though Captain Alfred Brent never really existed. <sighs> oh, that's, that's fine, just fine. The only thing we can suggest, Admiral, is that you clap him in irons and hold him until the investigation is completed. Are you a little bit late? Why is that? The Captain Brent you're talking about may very well be dead. That is, if he ever existed at all. I'm not sure I know what you mean, sir. Well, I'm not sure either. I'll get back to you when I am. Uh, 
there's an old saying about uh, too little and too late. Well, I think that's what we're up against right now, Chip. I'm afraid we're up against a little something more than that. Says Sparks been trying to raise a flying sub for the last ten minutes. Can't get any response. Last reported position, it was uh, approaching the area where the mini sub blew up. <laughs> Okay, sir? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm. Oh. She sure hit us full with that broadside. Oh, uh, something hit us. Whatever it was, it knocked out the radio and the controls. <coughs> that main circuit is out too, sir. Uh, Try and fix it. If you fix it in time, go to the CB and report this to the Admiral. What about you? Find that pirate ship that blasted us. of death. <coughs> Damage control completed survey of the flying sub. Here's a sample of what they found. Electronic wipeout, sir. Like something shot 100,000 volts into the main reactor circuit. It's hardly the kind of damage that would be caused by a 16-pound shot from a smoothbore. What, sir? Uh, never mind. I want repairs completed at flank speed and a complete electronic reflecting shield installed. Yes, sir. Sparks. Aye, sir. Try to get Captain Crane on Sea Dog Circuit 3. Fast. Aye, sir. What is that sound? You wouldn't understand. They, uh, they didn't have them in the 16th century. Somebody's trying to get in touch with me. You see, all I have to do is say, uh, this is Crane. I'm here with Brent on the island. Captain, this is Sparks. Can you read me? Sea Dog to Captain Crane, can you read me? Captain Crane, we started to receive your transmission, Captain. What went wrong out there? Can you read me? Sea Dog to Captain Crane, can you read me? Admiral, this is Sparks. Nothing more coming through from Captain Crane. All right, Sparks. Get me Admiral Howard, 11th Fleet. Patch it into the nose monitor. Aye, sir. I request release from present assignment for investigative purposes, sir. Request denied, Harry. We can't go off half-cocked because of some silly superstition. I don't agree. I think this phenomena poses a definite threat to our defense system. Based on what? If nothing else, the deaths of three of my men. Accidents. You call the behavior of Captain Brent accidental? You're in the area of international flap now, Harry. 
Let the State Department take care of it. You still haven't answered the question. Then let me put it this way. The entire undersea defense system will be operational in less than two hours. The sea view is needed to test and safeguard final installations. Sorry, Harry, but as long as you volunteered to be attached to us, that's the way it has to be. Mr. Morton. Yes, sir. Turning over command of the CVDO. Yes, sir. To proceed under present orders, continue to inspect and check out the defense system and cables. Very well. Admiral. What if Admiral Howard requests to speak with you? Tell him I've left to treat an incurable disease. Fleet Commander Bullheadedness. <laughs> for you not to move too quickly, Captain. My men are touchy about strangers who would try to take their treasure. Is that part of it? It is. La Reina Isabella. Is that the name of your treasure ship? It is for a fact, Captain, the most dangerous, most powerful ship afloat. Yeah! Am I supposed to believe that? It is a matter of complete indifference to me what you believe, Captain. But the fact remains that in less than one hour, the world will realize that what I say is true. What's the uh, subterrestrial scanner show? Not a thing, sir. No underground installations of any kind. <laughs> well, something around here destroyed the mini sub and hit you and Captain Crane. Look, I'll make another pass. You shall see an example of my La Reina Isabella's power. Hey, look at Korska. Look there. It's that ship again. Activate the reflecting electronic shield. Fast. Hope it works, sir. It better work. As I said, nothing can withstand the power of La Reina Isabella. I'm trying hard if... Come. She won't come, sir! She won't come! She's a proud and powerful craft, my La Reina Isabella. So powerful, she's going to destroy your underwater defense system. In less than an hour, that's exactly what she's going to do. Back inside with him. You all right, 
Sikorsky? Oh, yes, I... I think so. Well, the reflecting electronic shield did its work. It absorbed most of the force field that hit us. The way everything seemed to go, the way we hit that water. <laughs> you could have fooled me, sir. Let's hope it fools the people who wanted to fool. Yeah. See if you can, you can take her ahead dead slow. I saw I'll operate with the scanning gear. Admiral. Huh? Just what are we looking for anyway? I wish I knew. All I'm certain of is that we have to find it. think that ship of yours can destroy our underwater defense system? It is a certainty, Captain. You misfired once before, remember? The fool that destroyed your missile 147 has already paid for his mistake. Did you fake that call from here when you blew up that minisub? No, not here. I was aboard La Reina Isabella. Oh, come on, will you? Why don't you lay off this masquerade farce? It's no farce, Captain. I am dressed as I was when I sailed these seas 400 years ago. Sebastian. I'll join the others aboard the Isabella. You see what you can find out from our prisoner about the present position of the sea view. Don't hurt him too much. Just enough to loosen his tongue. I'll rejoin you after my victory, Captain. Until then.
of the main cable linking our weapon system. Our charts don't show anything like that, sir. But they wouldn't. I think somebody's patched into our cable. Another cable connected to ours? There'd be no reason for that, sir. Unless... Yeah, unless... Unless someone wants to send an electronic force through the cable and explode our warheads. Kowalski, get into white suit. We're going to splice into that cable. I see. <laughs> democracies. How generous. Ha! Ah, I shall obtain the rights to all the treasures in this area that belong to me and my family by right of conquest. What country are you working for, Brent? Anything 
out there yet, sir? Hmm? Oh, no. Here she comes. Reverse electronic power. And hang on! Sense was merely a cover for Brent's attempt to sabotage our defense system. Well, not entirely. I think he really believed he was the reincarnation of the original Captain Brent, armed with a new weapon, his electronic force field. A force field that could have blown up half the hemisphere if it hadn't have been for you. Well done, Harry. Thank you, Admiral. No uh, inquiry board for your desertion of post? Well, it seems to have slipped his mind. I wonder what country Brent was working for. Well, unfortunately, we'll probably never know. Actually, he was working for a legend of evil. A dead man's doubloons. I'll teach you that sometime. <laughs> 